Growing up is realizing that the most interesting member of My Chemical Romance is Frank Iero. The boys finally made it. Don't get me wrong. Gerard Way is one of my all-time idols. He's the reason I do a lot of the things I do creatively. And of course, Ray Toro is one of the few multiracial guitar gods of the 2000s rock scene. But Frankie is almost like a character. We don't have microphones, so uh, we need to just shut the fuck up. <laughs> a chronically ill punk rocker born into a family of blues and jazz musicians who went through several punk rock and hardcore bands until finally being able to join his favorite band and becoming a cult icon. I've talked about a few of these projects, but there's one I never hear anyone mention, and it's probably Frank's most interesting work. What the fuck? Hello and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, I'm Trevor and I am eternally uncool. I make videos about music, music culture, and anything that interests me, but mostly music right now. So if that sounds like something you'd be into, then I highly recommend subscribing to the channel and watching the rest of this video. In my previous two Frank videos, I talked about the band he was in before My Chem and the band he played in as a side project to My Chem. Pensy Prep and Leathermouth, respectively. And those two bands share similarities. Hardcore influences, some unclean vocals, guitars. Leathermouth was a bit heavier than Pensy Prep. Pensy leans more into the emo, post-hardcore side of things. But they're in the same ballpark. Death Spells is something completely different. It's under the same umbrella genre as hardcore. Frank has hardcore punk in his veins. It pretty much bleeds into everything he does. Unlike Pensy and Leathermouth, though, Death Spells does not feature conventional instruments that you would typically see in a hardcore band. Death Spells is what you would call digital hardcore. Digital hardcore is a fusion genre that mixes elements of hardcore punk, electronica, EDM, drum and bass, and you get the idea. It's a more aggressive version of techno, pretty much. It was pioneered in the early 90s in Germany and features socio-political lyrics or leftist themes. Death Spells feels like something Frank would do, but it also doesn't, if that makes sense. Frank is the punk of My Chemical Romance. He's got DIY cred from the Jersey Underground, and he added that punk energy to My Chemical Romance's overall sound. But with Death Spells, Frank experimented with programming and keyboards and synths and bleeps and bloops. They're still screaming though, so we can take comfort in that. What I want to do today is take a look at Frank Iero's most interesting project. We're going to look at Death Spell's formation, their soul album, and figure out if they left an impact or not. So grab a drink, grab a snack, get comfortable, and let's get into the video. In 2010, My Chemical Romance released Danger Days, the true lives of the fabulous Killjoys, the follow-up to their massively successful album, the Black Parade. Danger Days was received pretty positively despite the drastic change in tone. And by early 2012, the band was already working on the follow-up to Danger Days. They went to California, which is where most of the band was living at the time. I said most of the band was living in California, and that's because Frank was one of the few members who didn't. Frank was still living in their home state of New Jersey. Frank has Jersey in his veins, he's never leaving it. So while the band was working on the album, he shared an apartment with James DeWeese. I've mentioned James DeWeese throughout my videos on My Chemical Romance, but I don't know how many of you know who he is. James DeWeese has been in the scene since the mid 90s. He started out as a replacement vocalist for the Kansas hardcore band Coalesce. Then he became their drummer after the original singer got really pissed. While playing with Coalesce, DeWeese would play at a festival in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, 
with fellow Kansas band, the Get Up Kids. One thing led to another, and Dewey's would eventually be invited to play keyboards on the Get Up Kids' Red Letter Day EP. He would play with the Get Up Kids up until they went on hiatus in 2005, after which he would join My Chemical Romance as their touring keyboardist. He's the Yeti monster you see playing the keyboard in the Yo Gabba Gabba episode. By 2012, when they were working on the fifth My Chem album, Dewey's would be promoted to full-time member. If only he knew. So Frank and James were roommates. Oh my god, they were roommates. They were living in North Hollywood, an area that they said was kind of sketchy, not dirty, but definitely seedy and shady. This was an area filled with people trying to break into the industry. A lot of dancers, actors, adult entertainers. <laughs> when not recording the My Chemical Romance album, they were pretty much stuck in this shitty little apartment, just losing their minds. So what they did to lose their minds less was sneak equipment out of the recording studio and take it home and fuck with it. Seeing if they could blow out one another's speakers and trying to play as loud as possible without getting kicked out of the apartment. So Death Spells as a project just started out as two friends just goofing around, just messing with these synthesizers and programmers. It wasn't really anything. But as we all know, My Chemical Romance broke up in 2013, and their fifth studio album was never released. The band members would go on to do different things, which, for Frank and James, would eventually be death spells. Frank and James would move out of the sketchy North Hollywood apartment and head back to the East Coast. Once he was back home, James got a call from Jimmy Urine of Mindless Self-Indulgence a band that has toured with My Chemical Romance and has a strong relationship with them. Jimmy called James, telling him that MSI was going on tour. And he asked him if he was doing anything, if he knew anyone that had a band that could support them. Coincidentally, coincidentally, coincidentally James had some demos from the North Hollywood apartment that him and Frank had worked on. He sent those demos to Jimmy, and Jimmy was like, you're fucking in. So Death Spells toured the East Coast with mindless self-indulgence. A week before the tour with MSI would kick off, Frank and James would release little snippets of each song at midnight. This all led up to the release of their first single, Where the Fuck Are My Pills? You can hear some of the leather mouth still there in Frank's vocal delivery on this song. But other than that, this song is far and away different from anything Frank and James had ever done. My Come Romance and the Get Up Kids are very rooted in the guitar-driven rock and pop song structure. But there are no guitars here. It sounds closer to Nine Inch Nails <laughs> than it does My Chemical Romance. And the crazy thing is, it works. The sound was aggressive. There's definitely that hardcore influence from both members. But there's also the electronic element. My Chemical Romance had dabbled in synths and electro on Danger Days, but not to this level. On Danger Days, it was just kind of sprinkled throughout the track listing. But here, it's the backbone of the song. And it's a pretty damn good song, if you ask me. After the tour with Mindless Self-Indulgence, Death Spells supported The Architects for three shows. I should mention that this isn't the British metalcore giants Architects. This is Kansas City Rockers, The Architects. There's a the there. Who cares? Then they released an EP called Choke on One Another, Sunday Came Undone. It was really just a cassette with the two songs on it. So I guess technically not an EP, but more along the lines of something they could sell limited copies of at these shows and drum up some attention. <laughs> Death 
Deathspells was ready to release their debut album after these two tours in 2013, but Frank and James moved on to other projects that ended up taking up most of their attention and time. Frank with Frank Iero and The Celebration and their album Stomach Aches, and James DeWeese with his longtime solo project Reggie and the Fool Effect and their album No Country for Old Musicians. But Death Spell's album would not be lost to time and circumstance. Three years after the project ended, in 2016, Nothing Above, Nothing Below was released. Why was this album released so late? It took three years for the thing to finally be out there. What happened in those three years? Like I said, the two members were just focusing on other projects, and I guess they just... Forgot. It received mixed reviews. <laughs> the soundboard gave it a 5 out of 10, praising songs like Choke on One Another and Hell All American, but ultimately calling it jarring and haphazard. And Sputnik Music called it a chaotic mess, but recommended fans of Frank listen to it if they want, while also saying that most listeners probably won't like it. Album of the Year gave a much nicer review. It calls the production dated, but also notes how passionate Frank's vocals are. And Alt Corner called it a brave move to release an album that divided opinions. Although they couldn't make up their minds on whether or not the album was good. Like I said, this album was unique from anything Frank Aero and James DeWeese had done before. There's those hardcore roots in there, but the guitars are traded in for synths and program machines. I don't know what they're called. I remember when this album came out and just being really surprised by it. I knew Frank had a hardcore background, but this was before I even heard Pensy Prep or Leathermouth. Death Spells was my first experience with Hardcore Frank, as well as my introduction to digital hardcore as a genre. Nothing Above, Nothing Below is really more than just digital hardcore. There's a definite dark wave and gothy vibe. The opening track, Diluted, is an eerie spoken word bit with some light and spooky scents underneath it. It really sets the mood for the album. We have survived this life so far, but how far from where they come? And that leads into the frenetic Why Is Love So Disastrous, which is the only song that really stuck with me over the years from this album. Then you have a song like Hate Unconditional, which sounds like it should be playing in some seedy goth club in a bad part of town. In fact, a lot of songs on this album don't sound like they would be out of place at a club. I guess electronic music, no matter how abrasive or heavy, just lends itself to dancing. Overall, I don't think the album is bad, per se. It's definitely an acquired taste. If you like My Chemical Romance, then you would probably enjoy Pensy Prep and maybe Leathermouth, because at least they're somewhat similar. But Death Spells is something completely and utterly different. Something way more unhinged. If you like industrial music or darker music, then you'll definitely find something to enjoy in this project. But if you want to give this album a listen and just see what it's all about, I won't stop you. But don't say I didn't warn you. After the release of Nothing Above, Nothing Below, Death Spells went on a small headlining tour in 2016 with four dates in the UK, one in Moscow, and two in the US. They played that year's Riot Fest. After Riot Fest, they had two shows of Frank's project, Frank Aero and the Patients. And after that, nothing. 
they just stopped. I think Frank and James just put more attention into the projects that they were really more passionate about. Frank was releasing the album Parachutes with the Patients, and James would reunite with the Get Up Kids, and they would start touring again and release the album Kicker in 2018. So I think they just let the project go. Death Spells isn't as well remembered as Penzi Prep or as infamous as Leathermouth, but I do think it's an incredibly interesting side quest for Frank. Frank Iero and James DeWeese made an album that mixed hardcore, dark wave, industrial, goth, electronic, and it probably introduced new listeners to those sounds who probably wouldn't have discovered it otherwise. Will Death Spells ever return? Probably not. My Chemical Romance is back together, putting on some of the best shows of their career. Frank is also in LS Dunes, so that probably takes up a lot of time. Plus, Death Spells just feels like a kind of one and done project. I don't think a second album would be as interesting. What do you think? Have you heard of Death Spells? Are you a fan? Would you listen to a second Death Spells album? Let me know in the comments. That's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, then I highly recommend smashing that like button and sharing this video with everyone you know. I am a small, independent content creator who pretty much does everything on his own. So every like, every comment, every share, any interaction with this video really goes a long way. With all that being said, thank you for watching. As always, I'm Trevor. Stay on cool. And that's the end of the video. Goodbye.